So we're gonna quickly go through shortcut keys, some of the basics, some of the advanced, some you probably know, whatevs. So let's start off with the simple ones, middle mouse button to uh, rotate the view, shift middle mouse button to move it around, control middle mouse, zooming in and out, and alt kind of goes through the different orthographic views. So you gotta kind of like flick it around. So to move the objects around, G to move it around, R to rotate, and S to scale. I can though, if I go G to move, I can go Shift X and that'll exclude the X axis, Shift Z and that'll exclude the Z axis, and Shift Y and that'll exclude the Y axis. This also works for rotation, so Shift R, uh, rotate with R, Shift Z, but it's gonna rotate around the Z axis uh, shift X, it rotates along the X axis, and Shift Y, it rotates along the Y axis. Same as for scaling, Shift Z, Shift Y, Shift X. Okay, so that might be a little bit of a tip. That works in both object mode and edit mode. Now, depending up the top what snapping tool you have, I can go G to move, hold Control, and it's gonna snap to the grid. Now, there's a few different uh, styles, but this is how you use that. Here as well, I can press H to hide, uh, Alt H to unhide. And if I want to join two meshes, shift left click, control J to join. If I go into edit mode and select this cube, I can go control L to select everything that's linked, P to separate, separate by selection. And now we've got our two objects again. With rotation, if I press R, it's gonna rotate around the camera view. But if I press R a second time, it kind of goes into, I don't know what's called, but you can move it around like this. Depending on how your spacebar is set up, my spacebar is set up to search. However, if it's not set up to search and probably set up to play, F3 will bring up the search function and that's where you can search whatever functions you wanna run. Pressing the T key will bring up the side menu. Pressing the N key will bring up where all your add-ons are stored. Um, and last but not least, the numpad key. So numpad five goes into orthographic mode. Numpad one goes front, right, uh, seven is top. Now, if we want to go the opposite way, control numpad one is back, control numpad three is left, and control numpad seven is bottom. You can also press the four and the six to rotate at 30 degree intervals, um, and so on and so forth. Now to add a mesh, shift A, we got mesh, and I can add in a UV sphere, GZ, to move it up straight up the Z axis. I can press now control I to invert my selection and press the delete key to delete it. Now, if I wanna make that origin point back at the world origin, I can press Alt G to reset the location. This is the same for rotation, Alt R, and for scale, Alt S. If you wanna make sure what your correct transforms are, you can press N and look at the item transformation, and this is where it gives you all your information. So to go into edit mode of the actual object, we can press tab to go into edit mode. I can left click and select vertices. I can press number two and we go into edge mode. I can press number three and we go into face select, okay? However, I don't wanna left click on every face. I can press C and that'll bring up this selection. And if I left click, I can click and drag. If I wanna deselect, middle mouse button and it'll deselect. I can also press B for box select and we can do it like that. And also if I go B, middle mouse button and drag, it deselects. Now, if I wanna add some extra geometry, I can put in edge loops, so control R, and that'll throw in an edge loop. If I wanna select an edge loop, Alt left click, and that'll select an edge loop. Or if I wanna add more to it, I can go Alt shift left click, and we can keep going and start adding more and more edge loops. Now we've also got the delete function, so I've got an edge loop selected, I can press delete. Rather than deleting the vertices, because that will delete all the faces, I'm just gonna delete the edge loop, and there we go, we're back to how we were. Now we can also do insets. So with a whole bunch of faces selected, I'm gonna press I to do an inset. And so we can have it like that. But if I press I again, we're gonna create another inset. But if I press I again, it's gonna do individual faces. From here, what I can do is I can press E to extrude. And then we're extruding based on the average direction or the base of the average normal of the faces. However, if I come up here and we go individual origins and I press E to extrude, they're gonna go, they're gonna extrude off the normal of the face. So that's why now they're spread out. Back to our beloved cube, tab to go into edit mode. I'm just gonna select this edge, control B to add in a bevel, and then I can mouse wheel up and we can add more to uh, the bevel to make it more rounder. 
Um, while we're at, I'll show you another little quick technique for sci-fi panels. Alt R to put in edge loop. I do a control B and we have an extra uh, edge loop in the middle with a mouse button, mouse wheel. I'm gonna press control numpad minus and that's gonna minimize our selection. I can always go numpad plus and that's gonna increase our selection. So if I go minimize it down, I'm gonna press Alt S to scale. I think it scales opposite the normals or whatever the normals is. So Alt S, we can go in or out. Now, if I wanna slide this edge loop along the faces, I can press GG and that'll move it along to either the ends, either or. But if I wanna extend it further, I can hold Alt and it'll edge slide past the faces. That's pretty suave, that one. If we need to UV unwrap something, I can press A to select everything and press the U button, and this will bring up our UV mapping. Um, if you're lazy, Smart UV Project normally unwraps it quite nicely. Let's actually jump over to UV editing. So this is what we've got at the moment. If I press U to Smart UV unwrap, we can see how it unpacks. Uh, we can do U, and that's cubic projections. So it kind of projects from each of the sides. Now, like we discussed before about the GG, so um, edge sliding, if I were to just go G and X to move, we can see that the UV is deformed. However, if I go GG, you can see that we can move that slider along. So that's really helpful if you're working with textures, the textures are already applied, but you need to move stuff. So I can still move vertices by themselves and the texture itself won't be affected. So hopefully that was enough to get you started. If there's something that I missed, leave a comment below. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Hit the subscribe button, yeah? And uh, say hi to your mum for me.